this play, all the actors stink and the laughs are cheap. I've been out all day, I just want to eat, I just want to sleep. It's my second term, it's a fragile piece, hope it stays around. My resolve is firm, I have made this bed, now I must lie down. My nation's come a long way, and today our many states may stand united. T'was a heavy price we had to pay, and I hope our efforts don't go unrequited. Time has not been kind, we lost thousands of boys, I lost two of my own. North and South combined, in an orgy of violence like none we had known. Such a war was fought, brothers fought against brothers on my command. But was it for not when the slaves are all free in a more perfect land? My first term went by so fast. And so far I'm thankful for the years I've had. The war is now in the past. This play really isn't that bad. I'm glad that I scheduled this while we were in port because if the ship was doing this, I have the potential to just go face first on the carpet from where I'm sitting. And then you could all post it on YouTube and it would be hilarious. <laughs> My mom would see it and go, silly girl, why did you do that? It would be great. Um, I actually have a list of all the songs that I've written because there's only eight of them and I somehow managed to forget. Um, let me think. I might just get to the point where I start just yelling at requests because I don't want to look, look over here. Um, Yes. Um, there, there's a little more room up in the front if people want to. Yeah, you can sit through. in front of this pillow Otherwise, here. You, you feel like guys, sitting on a table. Yeah, there's some tables on the sides. Otherwise, if you want, if you guys can scoot your chairs forward a little more, you can get some more standing in the back. Thank you. How many sea monkeys can you fit in a conference room? and the challenge was to write a happy song. And yeah, and I was like, I've got a ukulele, so I have this in the bag, essentially. Um, and as long as I don't write about the assassination of a president, then it's gonna be a happy song no matter what. And I just finished reading Mr. T's autobiography. Um, it's Mr. T by Mr. T. And it's great if you can find a copy of it. Um, and I, have, I, have, I don't wanna get all snooty about Mr. T's Twitter account, which he opened last week. Oh. But like, I know what Mr. T sounds like. Like when you read this book, you can hear him yelling at it, yelling it at you in your head. Because um, he says that um, kids, his advice to the children is that they should be a scientist or a doctor or an astronaut because everybody can't be Mr. T. <laughs> <laughs> like, I find that his Twitter account does not switch into the third person quite often enough to be convincing. <laughs> Right before I got on the boat, he tweeted, I missed my van, which doesn't seem like something Mr. T would say. I think Mr. T lives in the here and now. <laughs> um, but 
But so, it, it, his attitude in this book is just amazing. He's a very inspirational dude, like not in the way that he intended. And, <laughs> so, this song is called I Pity the Fool. Obviously, what else would it be called? <laughs> accidentally sire a baby the way a straight man can and it created kind of this reverse Darwin Awards situation in my head where like if somebody did not step up to the plate we would have no Stephen Fry in the gene pool and that just seems bad for the species and so I wrote this song for some reason because <laughs> I can't just blog quietly to my friends I have to write songs about my weird feelings um, but so this song is called an open letter to Stephen Fry and it is me offering myself up to the cause that I invented. <laughs>
dehydrated or something, please. I won't be offended. It's kind of stuffy in here. Um, or maybe it's just me. Um, whoa! Ooh. Fine. Um, so this next one, um, when I was on tour with the Double Clicks, they have all sorts of awesome sing-along songs. Like they have choruses that are really fun to sing along to, and it really kind of brings the room together, sing along to something. And I was, I don't really have songs like that, because there are just too many stupid words. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> something like Umbop, you know, that's catchy. Why can't I do something like that? Um, but so I was thinking, what songs do I know? Um, is this room haunted? <laughs> or is it your imagination? Um, I'm just going to play with that wall now. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but no, so like, the Double Clicks have all kinds of awesome sing along songs, and I was totes jealous, you guys. Because um, I don't have anything like that. And I thought, what songs do I know uh, that are kind of that, you know, a room full of nerds would, would have heard before. Um, and this is what I came up with. Um, so if you know the words, do sing along. Odds are, if you know the words, you just don't know what order they come in. <laughs> United States, Canada, Mexico, Panama, Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, Republic, Dominican, Cuba, Caribbean, Greenland, El Salvador, too, Puerto Rico, Colombia, Venezuela, Honduras, Guiana, and still, Guatemala, Bolivia, and Argentina, then Ecuador, Chile, Brazil, Thank you. 
tiring. I'm like, I'll go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> How has the cruise been so far for everybody? <laughs> naps and all. Yeah, naps and all. I will pass that on to Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have other songs. Do I know? Hmm. I'm going to play a new one. How about that? <laughs> I'm going to play it on the fancy ukulele. Exercise my own legs, but thanks. <laughs> okay, so this is a long neck ukulele. It's a it's a baritone, and it's a six string baritone. Don't be fooled. It's got two of these ones and two of these ones for some reason. <laughs> um, so this song I wrote for the Damn It Liz holiday special, which happened in December. And the double clicks put out, I base a lot of my career decisions on what the double clicks are doing. <laughs> uh, but they had a whole Christmas EP full of awesome stuff, and I, and everyone was like, oh my god, new Christmas material at this show, it'll be great. And I'm like, crap. <laughs> I, I, I got nothing. Um, and so I, I wrote this about, it was sort of my, I was sort of trying to roll around my feelings about Christmas, and, and this came out instead. Um, but it's from the point of view of somebody named Molly, who plays the ukulele, and whose birthday is on Thanksgiving, which is cool, because my birthday is also on Thanksgiving. <laughs> um, but I, this song is not from my point of view, because the person that sings this song is an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm obviously super nice. Um, so this song is, uh, yeah, it's, it's fairly new, and probably not even done. But it's sort of my feelings about the holidays.
Yeah, and a couple of people have asked. I'm not going to go on the new Star Tours, even though it's at Disney World. It's not happening. I have very strong feelings about old Star Tours. Okay, so um, it's I I feel kind of like the the the. The Mr. T song is kind of dated. I wrote it in 2008, and it had stuff like Proposition 8 and things that weren't really a thing anymore. But I fundamentally can't change the song to update it to the time, so as I go on tour, I have to further explain more and more who Lisa Nowak was and what she did. You remember the astronaut with the diapers? You don't? Yeah. Well, here's what happened. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel with this crowd, that's not a problem so much. Um, for the uninitiated, there was this lady named Lisa Nowak. Uh, she was a robotics engineer on the space station, and uh, she... Keep it down back there. <laughs> Hi, Greg Benson. Hi, Furman. We love you all. We love you. We love you. Woo! 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 Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was a robotics engineer. I totally lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, right, diapers. <laughs> so, uh, so Lisa Nowak was a robotics engineer on the space station, and she was in this like weird friends with Betty's relationship with this other astronaut named Bill O'Flynn. Um, and. It, it yeah. seems that Bill Ufflin uh, did not see things this way and started a relationship with this lady from the Air Force named Colleen Shipman. And uh, to put it lightly, Lisa Nowak did not take the news well, uh, which is to say she packed her car with the most amazing set of stuff. Um, and she drove from Houston to Orlando, allegedly wearing diapers. Oh, sorry, I got distracted again. That means they're both ready to go, apparently. Yeah. 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 It's not that there are too many people in here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I need to know. Um, and so, she, yeah, so she packed, like, this amazing list of crap in her car. There's, like, wigs and, like, thousands of dollars in money and, like, several laptops and, like, trench coat. Awesome stuff. If you can read the police report, it's on the smoking gun. It's kind of great. I know where in the Orlando airport she was arrested, and I'm going to go <laughs> get back on shore. It's going to be great. Um, but so, uh, she also had, here's, here's the thing I find out when I write songs about obscure news stories. Uh, she was the darling of the 24-hour news cycle because she had adult diapers with her. And so, there was kind of some mistranslation between the police and the media, and she was reported that the astronaut was wearing diapers through this, you know, one-shot road trip. And later we found out that she was not actually wearing the diapers. But in the song she is, because that's the kind of world I want to live in. And I learned that... They were not even the Pens brand diapers, as I name in the song. They were the diapers that astronauts wear when they are being blasted out of the atmosphere. And the poop, the gravity from our Earth is pushing the poop out of them, forcibly. So these are like professional grade diapers, people. <laughs> and I mean, just like, just the story, just layers being, I mean, don't think about layers when we're talking about <laughs> the diapers. Um, but, so the story just gets richer and richer as I learn about it. But none of that is this song. Um, this song is from her perspective. Uh, it is called Road Trip.
<laughs> it feels very satisfying to make a whole room of people sing about pulling on diapers. <laughs> feel a certain power. Wow. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> you know, sorry. Uh, the mothership is coming for everybody. I'm sorry. Um, how much time do I have? 30 minutes. 30 minutes? Okay. How much time do you want? Well, I mean, I don't want anybody to sweat themselves into raisins, so I, I'm trying to be trying to be speedy. Um, Is there anybody making work with more people? There's sound. Can we can we lap it? Is that too intimate? Oh, you can come through the fire exit. Heck if I care. Sorry. If you end up tucking up even further, I can give you switches. If you tuck up even further, because other people need to come in, you can also get switches. You may not be able to get to. You may not be able to reach. I didn't know that people were going to be able to Waiting room music, sorry. Um, okay, what now? I have my hope. My hope? Okay. Alright. I don't play this song very often. Probably because it's hopelessly dated. Um, it's aging well. Yeah. It occurred to me the, the potentiality that, that that 14 year old, the awesome one, you know him, would show up and then he would have no idea what MySpace is. <laughs> because he was like five at the time or something. <laughs> Oh, what? Oh, man. Crats are coming in, you guys. Come on. in the song, because he's going to go, what's on my space? And then we'll all feel really old. <laughs> so the song is called My Hope. <laughs> Clearer when they 
comments date all the way back to 2008. I hope they dig through your pictures and find something we might call compromising. I hope seeing their mom in a swimsuit or smoking a hookah isn't too traumatizing. But it will be past their comprehension. They'll ask, did Grandpa and I give you enough attention? changed. It's gone from like, oh, what cutting satire, kind of, ah, ha, ha, that kind of laughter, to like, oh, yeah, I remember Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I guess that, I've been doing this for a while, apparently. Now we've reached the John Roderick portion of the show. Hold on. Okay, now what? Wikipedia song? Oh, the Wikipedia song. That's not even on my list. Oh, thank you. I totally forgot about that one. You forgot, you, you, forgot you wrote it? Yeah, I it's not on my list of songs I know. <laughs> but I totally, I totally know that one. I <laughs> okay, so that one. Um, so this is the obligatory breakup song. As a lady songwriter, I have to write a breakup song or they kick me out of the guild. And I found this loophole where for like, I had this really weird week where I had a Wikipedia page and I'd always told myself, I will believe that I'm a professional music person when I have a Wikipedia page saying so. And so I did for a week and I said, Molly Lewis is a professional music person. Her hair smells really good, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, it says that I'm a songwriter, so I must be, that's awesome. And then it got taken down um, on the grounds that I was not famous enough. And there were not enough citations saying that I was famous, but there were plenty saying that I wasn't. <laughs> and in that situation, I did the worst possible thing which was I read the, they make a, a bulleted list of all the reasons that, that the article should not be there and why it doesn't merit space in their servers. Um, and I just, it made me feel alive. <laughs> and so I channeled all of that feeling into, into this song. Because I had no cranky feelings about boys, but man, I was ready to re read Wikipedia the right act. You know? um, and so this song ostensibly is about a boy, but metaphors is not. <laughs> you're, you're smart, you're gonna see. You can you know how metaphors work. <laughs> and so this song is called It All Makes Sense at the End.
always was, but I want it in every set that I do. <laughs> really good. So, quick opinion poll. Is it too hot in here? Yeah, okay. Because I, thought, I figured it was because I have a lot of hair and everybody's staring at me. But it's, it is actually hot in here. Okay, it's, yeah. It's, just, it's all your heat vision focusing on um, So, what, what do we do? I don't want to, like, keep you in here so long that we all dehydrate. But... Okay. What time is it? You got 12 minutes. I have 12 minutes. Okay, great. That's like one more song and then some talking. Star Tours. Star Tours. I paid the food. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, no, we were we were talking about his Twitter account and then I, I quoted from his stuff. Um, I could I could do end of the tour. I should do that at the end though. Oh, I could I could do some some nautical Randy Newman songs. Okay, I should do that. Whoa, okay. <laughs> it's not actually that nautical, it's actually about a slave ship, but it's called Sail Away, so that's kinda nautical, right? Okay, let's see. That's a tune, sure. I'm gonna drink some water, talk amongst yourselves, and think about how water would be great right now. <laughs> I was smart enough like Molly to bring a bottle. Yeah, I know, me too. <laughs> if you, if, yeah, please. That applies to any song in my set. I get thrown off because nobody ever does it. But I think if I establish that rule, somebody would. It's really scary when people sing along to the Nations of the World song, though. It happened a couple times on tour, and it felt like I'd met another Highlander. <laughs> Getting up, like off the stage and staring them in the face. <laughs> and the impacts never happen. Kind of stand like that. <laughs> and I always won. Let <laughs> <laughs> okay. oh, me make sure I. Yeah, okay. But I don't know. That's fine. See if you will cover for me. Oh, no pressure. In America, you get food to eat.
somebody sends it to Jonathan Colton who says, hey, she's not bad. Too bad I can't hear the whole thing. And I went, oh, I must remedy this. And so I recorded the whole thing and put it on YouTube. And at some point he contacted me and said, where do you live? Like, not in a creepy way, but like, <laughs> when I'm in your town, we should totally do that song together. And I went, okay. <laughs> and then a number of years later, um, we were on the way to a show that I was playing with him in like Seattle. He said, hey, you want to go on a cruise? And I went, sure. <laughs> and so that was, but if it had not been for me doing this song that he wrote and then him seeing it, I would not at all know Jonathan Colton in person. And so that's pretty cool. Um, and I never play this song because it doesn't belong to me. And I feel kind of dirty doing it, but I'm going to. <laughs> Sing along if you can. It's not in the right key, but you'll figure it out. Um, <laughs> Thank you. 
Um, and this song was written for his birthday um, because if there's one thing you remember about him, it's his beard. And I was told to write a song about beards in commemoration of his beard for his birthday. Beards. <laughs> and so this is what came out. It is called The Year of the Beard. And it's a celebration, it's an anthem, it's a product change. That's a really short song. <laughs> so, whatever word you have for that, that's his song. Think of all the great beards that go back through history, like Lincoln, Marx, and Jesus, and Gandalf. <laughs> a hairy, happy family on a fibrous family tree. The only rhyme with Gandalf was Van Gogh, also bearded. <laughs> all you're saying is, give beards a chance. You know, I bet all hair wishes it could be in a beard. Am I right, ladies? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Come to think of it, pubic hair is nothing but a beard inside your pants. <laughs> I think I might have just made it weird. <laughs> well, let's just sing about it. Beards, they're like an apron on your neck. Beards, they're like a scarf in every season. Beards, they're there to make sure that your collarbones get shaved. A fuzzy fringe just for your chin. It's the year of the beard. Jawbones 